So I don't even know what I'm gonna title this video. It's not just like about hair. Just stick with me. Get some juice. Get some tea. I remember one day um, I was sitting outside of cosmetology school and my dad was dropping me off and my dad has been gone for 10 years now. It's crazy, almost 10 years. And I remember he told me, he said God was going to grow my business like behind my wildest dreams, behind anything I could ever imagine. And it's not gonna have nothing to do with me. And it's not gonna have nothing to do with hair or nothing. So I didn't really want to hear it because it's like, what are you talking about? Like, what are you talking about that? Like, I'm in cosmetology school right now. So basically you telling me that everything that I'm doing is kind of for nothing cause I'm not even, what? But I was just like, okay, dad, and give him a kiss. And I've never really understood what he meant by that until now. Trust that exactly where you are is where you're meant to be. So keep your chin up. So your crown doesn't fall. Remember your royalty. Once I like think of something in my mind, like once I set my mind to something, it's like my the way my brain works I just break everything down into actionable steps and then I do them and I know in my mind once I complete these steps I'm going to get the result and it happens every single time and I've been doing that like forever so I already told y'all most of the story in this video here so watch this video first and then come back here so you're not confused I just remember you know whenever I first started doing hair it was just all about the art form of it I feel so in love with with hair cutting like once I got out of cosmetology school the salon that I was at one of my really good friends she was at my wedding her name's Tiffany and she was a beast with shortcuts so I just I start falling in love with hair cutting even more like and she didn't like sit down and teach me but I would like watch her and I would learn how to like use a razor and so I just fell in love with like hair cutting that was like my thing like short pixie cuts and that was before like instagram and stuff like that so then once instagram came along that's when like i started with the silk fusion therapy and i started to hone more in on like transformation right because that's what gets clicks like before and afters like to show somebody looking like super dusty or show somebody looking real you know exclusive and then show them looking even more exclusive when you get done that was like the wow factor that got you clicks and views and stuff you know so that's what I was like focused on and going from super super curly hair to super straight hair was something that everybody was super into seeing and it got clicks so I focused in on that set my plan up and boom shakala boom there we go the higher I went the more unfulfilled I felt it was like what is going on like I'm not supposed to feel like this so by the time I got to the end I was like arguing with myself like no and the reason I'm skipping over it like I don't want to dwell on like oh the way women were and people standing me up and money like yeah that was a part of it but I feel more like that was the way that was the thing that God was using to like really really push me out because I wouldn't have just stopped doing it by myself like I feel like people standing me up the attitudes and stuff like that I feel like that was the the icing on the cake like the sprinkling like the push I don't that it definitely wasn't the reason why you know like the more the more I tried to ignore it the more irritating things would get and it would be like thing after thing after thing would happen not because old oh, things are so bad and old oh, people are so negative it's like no it's not something that I was supposed to be doing anymore not because oh the hair industry is so bad or oh women are so bad but just like no like this this season of my life is over and it's time for me to move on to something else because I was not and I'm not saying that it's something wrong, right? If this is what you're doing it for. But I wasn't in it so people could know my name. Like, I I was this close to being like one of those ghost hairstylists, right? That never, you never post pictures that they sell for nothing. Like, they just be on there. All you see is they work. And like, the first time you see them is when you get to the appointment. I almost wanted to do that because I'm like a loner. Like, I don't want to be, 
in the mix and stuff all the time. The biggest reason is that I didn't want to walk away. Like, let's sit and be honest. Like, when you do hair, doing hair is something where if you're not doing hair, you're not making money. Forget about social media. If I am not physically doing hair, I'm not making money. I can't pay bills. Yes, I'm married. I'm talking about, like, for me, it's not even about like money and stuff like that. Just for me and my self fulfillment. I'm not saying that there's something wrong with it, but I'm even though I have two children, I'm not that type of woman. Like I don't really find, and I'm not saying there's something wrong with being that type of woman, but I don't find my fulfillment in having a baby. You know what I mean? Like it's just not the thing because my kids, like by the time my children got to be like seven they barely just need to make sure and stuff like they don't hurt each other but for the most part like even now with my kids being 11 and 12 they be looking at me like when i go in there they be looking like yes like do you need help with something ladies love you too mom but to make that i'm just not one of those women where like my children are like my entire identity right so um like I said, and I'm not saying there's something wrong with it if that's what you do. But for me, it, it just I just really needed to feel more uh more fulfillment in the knowledge that I had obtained and the things that I was interested in. Because for me it wasn't about like oh making all this money and being the top hairstylist in the world, everybody knowing my name, because I really didn't want people to know my name. I just wanted them to see my skill level and to change the industry in certain ways like I talked about in this video. Oldest lady that ever rolled around brush, send out. Girl, I was gonna be rolling that until I couldn't control it. Yes, I was, but it just, it was just like something else. Like, no, you're supposed to be doing something else. And it was like, I didn't feel like, oh, I'm supposed to leave the hair industry altogether because I had a lot of other opportunities like still in the scientific realm but just out of like the hair industry and stuff like that but like I just I'm just like no like it's just something it's just something else about it and so that's when I started to really really dive into it you got to remember though if I'm not doing hair no more nobody paying me for the hair why right? people not just sending me money to do sending me money because I'm cute okay I'm not one of those girls. And then if I'm not doing hair, then that means I'm not recording YouTube videos. And so if I'm not recording YouTube videos, there are no videos. And if there are no videos, there is nowhere for brands to put ads. And then I'm not getting $10,000 checks. I'm not getting $11,000 checks. It's slowly dwindling down to one day. It's at like $400. So just imagine going from 11000 a month to $400 a month. So I had to fill those gaps in between. So this is when I just mentally was like, God, what in the freak is happening? So I knew that I was on the right path because I'm getting pushed and made to feel so uncomfortable. Like I already told you in that last video. And then I walk away. Not even, not even, not even eight months after I retired, COVID happens. I'm like, oh my freaking God. Like, oh my, no, I probably did. It was a year later. I think it was like the year after. And then COVID happens. And I'm like, oh my freaking God. Okay. And things slowly but surely start to make sense. Right. So, uh, I'm feeling good. And then I, right after that, literally a couple of minutes before that the algorithm hits so the algorithm hits and now instead of me posting a video and it getting at least 10,000 views within the first couple of days is getting like half of half of half of half of that and I don't know why not to mention and I'm just being real not to mention even though I did have other businesses I was able I was able to safely feel like I could walk away because of the constant like 10 11,000 a month and it wasn't just like at that time the only videos that was hidden wasn't just hair videos like it was anything I would post it that's how it would go so I was comfortable using that for my seed money for one of my other projects and then 
that happened so it was no longer the seed money so then i just started questioning myself and it was like the 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 more i questioned myself the the lower my confidence would go and i just felt like i would i was just slowly creating more of and more and more and more and more of the energy that I didn't want so I was like surrounded by it and so not only was I feeling like I was losing everything that I had worked for like I said thank God for my husband because what the hell girl but not only was I losing everything that I had worked for like we not only was I like not getting the views from before but nobody was using a round brush before and everybody was starting to use them now and I wasn't getting credit for it. anything and then it was like everybody all of a sudden was talking about porosity and literally just like watching everybody like say all of the things that I was saying but then watching my videos and my views tank it was like it just made me feel so like oh my god I'm like am I making a mistake like did I make a mistake god did I did I hear you wrong like okay well let me go back and then I will go do hair and because it's nothing like I could go stand behind the chair right now if I wanted to go do hair again full time today I could and have my books full for months and I don't mean that like in a bragging way but it that's what it is but like every time I would go back and do it again, I just would feel so unfulfilled. Like I would be so un uneasy. Like my spirit would just be screaming. I know it sounds crazy, but my my spirit would just be like, no, like let's go. <laughs> like for real. That's how I would feel on the inside. But outside, I was like, hey. But on the inside, and then when I had the one situation any little thing that would go like I would be getting cussed out in my head and so it just I'm just like no like it, it has to be something else so and mind you everything I'm talking about is like over the last five years right so um I finally just had to get to a place where I'm like all right like I have to really especially when you come to the end of yourself right and you you make a decision like I'm going to stay true it don't matter what I lose it don't matter what people say about me it don't matter what assumptions people make about me like I'm going to stay true because I know that I know that I know no matter what I see before me in my reality right now in the 3d no matter what I see before me I know what I saw coming I know what I was told and not to mention like I'm sorry if this sounds crazy to you but I had dreams about COVID before COVID happened like that's why I stopped doing hair when I stopped doing hair it was like and like I went and told my husband he was just looking at me like okay but we've been together for so long like it's been 13 years that we've been together 12 years that we've been married and we've had so many situations where I'm like babe I don't think we should do that because this is gonna happen and he like babe that's extra and then exactly what I said was gonna happen happen so now he at a place where he like as crazy as shit sound that's what we doing I got you like I'm rocking with you so that's that's what it was so uh once you really really get to a place where you you've came to the end of yourself you've lost everything that you feel like gives you worth or uh, or validity in in the 3d like one, once you've lost that then you are now like all right let's do it you like to get kind of personal here i believe that we're here to learn and every experience is a lesson and I also believe because of my father I remember my father used to always say to me like things are only a problem when they go like under the surface and like they're unseen but when you can see something and you know that it's there and it's not hiding from you anymore then you can you can run into it like and you can face it I remember watching something I can't think of who it was but it was some song it'll come to me in a minute but she just said the words of the song was basically saying that like I had to basically she was saying that her she had to realize that her enemy was her right like everything that 
everything that she get from people, all the negativity that she's getting from people is coming from her because we are a mirror, right? So whatever I'm feeling, I'm projecting out and it's coming back towards me. And at first, I'm like, I don't want to hear that shit. Like, what are you talking about? Like, how am I projecting all of these hood red hoes on YouTube talking crazy to me? Like, that don't make no sense. So that's when I had to like really, really sit down. And like when I say what I'm about to say next, if it's anybody in my family that's watching this, stop watching. I'm not talking about nobody specific, but this is my story. If you were part of it, then that's just what it is. And I just want to say like, I am so grateful for you. Like, I mean it from the most beautiful place. Like, I know I be being sarcastic all the time. I'm not being sarcastic. Like, I mean this from the most beautiful place. It's about to sound so woo-woo and so extra, but I believe with all of my soul that every experience that I have been through has made me the woman that I am. And they're all lessons that I had to learn and pull information from. And without you, doing that that you did i wouldn't be who i am so i love you and i thank you and i know that most likely when you did what you did you were probably going through something and going through your own internal struggle and maybe we agreed to be a problem for each other before we got here who knows i don't know i love you i am not mad i swear to god i'm not i just want to say that but this is this what happened Shit. for me that's why I didn't I had to I, I really had to start like really analyzing and like journaling and taking notes and when I did that I really could start paying attention to like what my triggers were like what things used to trigger me so one of the things that you that, that triggered me first and it was like a domino effect of things this is a trigger warning if I start making you feel the way just sign off like I'm telling you so when when um whenever i would be online like on youtube and stuff like that or on instagram reels and shorts and stuff and i would see like a younger girl with an older dude it bothers me so much it bothers me so much like it would really irritate me and i didn't understand why like like especially when they would like flaunt it like oh it's the yeah because of oh like it it pisses me off and i never understood why right so stay with me so i have a set of twin sisters from my father's first marriage and then i have a brother from my uh mom and her uh, previous relationship before my dad then i'm my parents kids together Okay, stay with me. So, my father is 12 years older than my mother. Now, I knew this my whole life, but I didn't, because I was so young, I never, like, I don't know, I just never put it together. I never saw it as a problem. I never, I just, it just never was a thing. And of course, because I wasn't connecting, why it bothered me so much, but anyway. And so, uh, me growing up, like I said, my dad had his first relationship, my mom had her first relationship, and then they like got it right with to together, and then I was their love child, so they like built this world around me. And I'm not saying it was like it's a bad thing or nothing like that. I'm just saying what it is. So my parents like they they built their world, and I was their baby, and they I was like I don't wanna, really want to say shelter, but kind of sort of a lot of <laughs> like shelter kept like really close i was in not that they didn't allow me to do stuff but i was really like a homebody and plus like i'm a cancer so i was really like me and my parents had a really really like close-knit relationship and my I'm, my mother's side of the family like we're fine like we're we're close but well we mm -hmm. But with my dad's side, it would just always be like this weird energy and I just never understood what it was. And it was just like, it would just be like me on the side. And like, sometimes I would like come around, but I never like felt included or anything. It just, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it because I was a kid. It just never felt right. It felt weird. And so anyway, 
as I and I've I've told that story in this video, so I don't I don't really want to go there. But as I as I got as I got older, you know, and I would see like my other friends and they siblings, and I just would automatically expect like, oh, okay, this is what it's gonna turn into over here for me, and that never happened. Like that never happened for me. So the older the older I got, the more I, I don't. Ooh, I was gonna go a little deeper. I don't really want to do that today. <laughs> the older I got, the more I began to understand, and the more I began to connect the dots. And the more I connected the dots, without getting too deep into it, I could begin to see the dynamic of my dad, my 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 father being about. I think he was about thirty one when he met my mom, and my mom was like twenty. Like 19, 20, 19 when they met. And my, yeah. So, without, that's enough details. I was like, I was the younger girl's baby. Like, you, you, you could always feel that. You could always feel that my parents, like, had a certain dynamic. And that's how my aunties and them treated me. So, I just want to say this. If you are a woman... If you are a woman of any age and you have nieces or or younger girls, please know that like all of the little stuff that you say under your breath, the little side eyes that you give in, like the different way that you treat them, the way that you look at them versus the way you look at your other nieces and nephews, they notice all of it and they're going to remember it forever, right? So really be careful with that. And even with just family in general i would have just older women as i dug deeper into that i could start seeing like where all of my triggers were from like older women like in my life as a kid like growing up it was always older women who were like oh you fast oh those tight pants or oh the way you dressing or how you stack like that like i remember my body like my daughter is 10 and so like looking at her is literally like it just it just triggers so much it's memory so many different things that i had to deal with at that time because i'm watching my daughter develop the same way that i did and i remember at 10 i just woke up with ass it just happened and i remember all my aunties all my cousins like oh she fast she fast like i would have on i remember we would go like shopping for clothes and stuff me and my cousins had the same the same exact baby suit i go get the baby suit in my size they like oh she look fast but we all got on the same baby suit and i was so confused because i didn't know like now i know oh that little girl has some ass i didn't fucking i didn't get it right so anyway so that's why like naturally I'm always like so I will always be like so defensive like because I'm just used to that like I started developing at 10 so since I was 10 years old I've been like trying to like jump back first and so like I was saying earlier like just really really looking at the situation for what it is like okay that's the mirror right that's the mirror because since I was a little girl I've been like shut up no i'm not oh no i'm not like i've been defending myself first and then once i got done defending myself against my aunties and against my cousins and stuff then i had to go to school i remember one of my cousins and it's something that's what i mean like don't just re say random shit out of your mouth thinking like oh they're gonna forget no they're not like i'm about to be 33 years old and i still remember this and i th i'm pretty sure she don't even remember saying it but i do Cause she was somebody that I really looked up to and I remember I was with her and I just had on some regular like black pants or something and she was like you look cute but I'm just so glad I'm not shaped like you and I was like what do you mean and she was just like I don't know like because I don't have like my body don't look like yours like I know that if a guy want to talk to me he really just want to talk to me but for me not because of the way that I'm shaped and I was just like oh my god like it hurt my feelings so bad but I don't know like I think maybe it's a cancer thing like it hurt my feelings but she was like the closest thing I had to a sister so I was just like she didn't mean it like that and I just kind of let it go and I would do that all the time these things I'm not like oh like I'm so sad no I'm just telling you like 
these are different things that I had to like dig up for myself right then on top of that like having a brother a brother that was there like 24 7 and one day went away to college like baby sis I'm gonna be back I promise and never seen him again and every time I talk to him after that he's either asking me for something or being disrespectful like don't ever see him again like since I've been 10 years old since I was 10 years old and I'm 33 right now since I was 10 years old and we're 10 years apart by the way so the ball is not in my court that's 100% on him so since I was 10 years old I've probably seen him four times sisters um it's nothing nothing bad but I think they were about 16 or 17 when I was born so we just never really had a chance to build anything like we had a couple of moments that was a little something you know like a couple moments but for the most part it was real we never really got past like a, a certain beer a certain level i as i uncover all of these different things so the stuff with my father like deep-rooted anger that i had with that uh which i'll get to last my the stuff with my brother my sisters and my cousin like all of these different things my aunts the complex that i had about my body and my personality and all of these different things i'm like okay like really sitting down and like that's what shadow work really is like really looking at the shit that you keep buried so and and, and see it all laid out on the table so you can make sense of everything so once i like put everything out in its own like thing like i literally wrote everybody's name on a piece of paper it's not extra but it's just how my brain works so i wrote everybody's name on a piece of paper and i just laid everything out and on a name i put the thing like in my mind that i feel like it's connected to it that's always popping up that is always a trigger for me and i was like holy shit and then i started noticing the way that i would react to people when they made comments here on youtube like it was this one day it was literally the day that it happened I was um I'm it's something in my eye I'm not crying for real <laughs> it was uh something 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 some video and this lady had made this comment and, like she made an assumption about me and when people like oh you only saying that oh she thinks she all that because she like those are triggers for me because and this these are things that I just learned about myself like it, it's a trigger for me it used to be a trigger for me because that's what my family would do to me or that's what other people would do to me like just automatically make assumptions that's why like the bbl thing and all of that shit it irritates the hell out of me because it's like and i mean i know y'all like everybody like fat ass but it's it's something i used to get fucking terrorized about like i was a fuck I, like I will walk into a room and if a boy don't like if a boy likes me and I don't like him he could spread a rumor and tell the whole school that I'm a hoe all because of the way my body shape I I would have boys spread rumors about me like ain't no way she that thick um, and she ain't fucking like it was horrific so to see everybody like flaunting the body that I that I feel like haunted me my whole life is crazy you know but whatever Y'all need to get y'all fucking thighs done. But anyway, it oh oh so it was a somebody made a comment or whatever and the tone like that's most of how most of y'all rats be. Cause y'all act like y'all aunties, the same old women that gave me the trigger in the first place. And I, oh she thinks she is so I would be like, shut the fuck up and I would I would do what I always do, what I've always done to defend myself because I've been doing it forever. Like my mama tells this story about when I do, I've always done gymnastics and stuff like that. And I had a leotard on, the same leotard that everybody else had on, but then the teacher pulled me, had my mama pull me to the side talking about, I have to wear something different than all of the other girls because of the way that my body was shaped. Yes, because I, like I said, when I was 10, I woke up with ass. So I've been dealing with it forever. So like I said, just a, a conflict. So these are things that I'm learning. So I'm like, bet, okay. So now that I can see where it is, I'm like, okay, if I no longer want these to be triggers, I'm going to give this energy back to the people that it belongs to. So that is what the fuck I did. Yes, I did. Not a, with an attitude though, just call and say, hey, can we talk? But see, most of the time when you hit up the people 
who have done the damage, they are not ready to face it. Because a lot of people, especially when when you're the person that I was, like passive, letting stuff slide, not saying nothing about it, and just, oh, okay, like you didn't really mean it like that. Because when you, when you, even though my dad, my mom was one of six, my mom's one of 12, I'm so, I was raised alone and by myself. So when you raised alone like that, and you do have a, like somebody to show person, you just, you just let them get away with shit that you would never let other people get away with. Like never. She was my big cousin and I used to fight for her, like five years older than me, but I used to fight people for her. So just stuff like that. So anyway, that's when I'm like, okay, get on the phone, calling everybody. And I knew when I call, I'm sitting down, I'm meditating and I straight up here like you're not going to get the response that you want. But you need to give this energy back to its original source because it's not yours. It doesn't belong to you. And that's exactly what I did. And so the outcome was really good and I could just feel like this weight being lifted off and like once I got done once I lifted that weight I could really be honest with myself and say okay Cynthia like it's not everybody else it's you this is these are triggers that you have and because these are triggers that you have because these are things that you've dealt with on the inside of you you are drawing those types of people to you you're drawing in that type of energy you're drawing in these judgmental like messy crap starting fault finding women like that's what you're drawing in because that is what you're projecting because that's what you're full of this is the armor that you put around yourself and regardless like if I'm constantly on the defense then I'm I'm attracting somebody to defend myself against that's it's just as simple as that so that's when I had to say okay I'm done regardless of what I lose regardless of what happens to my views whatever um uh, it doesn't matter like I have to put me first and the things that I love and the things that are important to me because when I was standing behind a chair it don't matter how much I love hair don't nobody want to hear that if you if all you hear for is a little person curl Girl, you don't care nothing about me telling you about your diet. And like, that's just not what, what, what people wanted, but it's what I needed. And I felt so like closed in, like just imagine like knowing the type of videos that I make now. Oh, porosity and silk amino acids and hydrogen bond and disulfide bond girl don't nobody want to hear nothing like that they wanted to talk about love and hip-hop and uh and rice water like it was so i was just like okay and that's when i i began to be led in other directions so like the the changes that i seen immediately it was literally like as soon as i addressed them as soon as i gave them that energy back i don't even attract women like that anymore i don't i haven't been called out of my name on this channel in a very long time literally since i made that decision since i switched over and was like okay I'm doing something different everything has been different and I'm like okay like forget views forget that well not forget it because views you can come back hey mr. view I like you I'm not saying because why would you want to come to me if I'm saying I don't care about you I care about you mr. view I do it's true like now I can really do the things that I'm passionate about now I can do things now I have a business a consulting business where you can book a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me for an hour you tell me everything that you're going through I ask you a series of questions we get you a brand new game plan together then I'm checking in on you and I'm getting results for multiple women all right it just does something to me or now that we have the apothecary just to know that I have consulting clients who were having a, tr a problem conceiving and then they use a few of my herbal blends and then the next thing you know 
they're pregnant and they're they're pregnant or they're now able to get pregnant because their body's back on this normal system like it's just so amazing to see all of these results or the seven day challenge me being able to change the lives of thousands of women and do it on a daily basis because the seven day challenge is still going on or to be able to produce ebooks and courses just all of these different things that i'm able to do and really really give long lasting results and i'm not saying that I'm not saying that as a cosmetologist I didn't do that because absolutely I did but to be able to bridge that gap right to make hairstylist jobs easier so that way they're not you can focus on actually growing your clients hair out because I remember when I was standing behind a chair it was hard to grow my clients hair out because I would treat it and then by the time they come back for their next appointment I'm too busy cutting hair off and fixing what they've done to the point where I'm not even able to grow hair out but I'm like if we could get somebody in the middle that helps you set a routine so that way you're not breaking your hair off in between appointments then you can really retain that length and being able to be that middle ground has been so fulfilling for me and I know that it's something that would have never happened if I was not able to really sit there in shadow town and really really look and find my trigger understanding that like sometimes if I make a video and you decide that you're gonna call me out of my name it's not something that I have to come up out of myself to defend myself against just understanding like damn like you you either really going through something personally and you projecting that onto me or like you really are triggered and it's something that you really do and don't be mad at me girl get an ebert get an ebert and it'll help you girl if you just get you a little ebert to be talking crap to me i just wanted to have this little chit chat or whatever because i just feel like it's so important for us to be able to like really get to the root cause of the way that we are like why do you talk the way that you talk why do you react the way that you react why are you triggered by the things that you're triggered by and i feel like one thing that we need to talk about more in the black community that i know a lot of people are not going to want to talk about is just having the older generations of women being accountable for the way that the women in my generation have turned out because I think that it's really unfortunate, like even though I don't agree with the way that the ratchets and stuff like that act just with Freak Nick and stuff about to come back out, it'll show you that, you know, we kind of a product of where we came from. Like a lot of the twerk team captains that are out now are just following in their mother's footsteps. A lot of the, the 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 loud and disrespectful women that you see now are products of where you come from. Some of the women in my family were called bitches and hoes the first time by their own mother. So of course they don't know how to talk to you. They don't know how to speak to you properly. They don't know how to give and receive love the right way. They see love and compassion and 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 stability as something different. Because a lot of people didn't have fathers in the home. Like I had a father. Like my father was like six two, six three, probably taller than that. My father was a big old dude. Yes, he provided very well for my mother, but my father nowadays, your people will call a simp and was with my mother until the day that he died. The last face that he saw was my mother's. The last person he saw, the last person he laid eyes on was my mother. And from my knowledge and from my mother's knowledge, my father never stepped out, never cheated on my mother. And one of the most masculine me you will ever meet but will cry in the drop of a freaking hat do you hear me and so i feel like because we don't talk about things because people don't feel uh 
safe enough to speak about how they truly feel about certain things we don't really understand how to treat each other we don't understand how to treat the opposite sex we don't know how to treat the same sex we don't we just don't understand how to treat each other because people were not taught properly and i feel like if we all can sit down and have these conversations not like pointing fingers you should have taught me this but really sitting down and say hey like i wasn't taught this so i couldn't give it to you but let's work on it together you know i think that would like really help people a lot more because how can you expect all of these women who were not given love in the right way to now be able to translate that how can you expect women who didn't have fathers and who didn't grow up with men in their home to know how a man really acts or to know how to really treat a man like I know that men have emotions and some more emotions than women and it's the most masculine shit you'll ever see in your life but if you don't if you if you didn't have a father or if your father didn't show emotion or anything like that then you confuse a man having emotions with a man being soft and I think this all just goes into the way that we were taught into the things that we saw so this is why I think just in general to full circle this whole thing like if we can all just go back to its original source then it's easy for us to be able to pinpoint everything and like then go ahead and like check through and see like hey let's sort through stuff like with no animosity with no disrespect but of course both parties have to be open and able to speak and you can't be being all like super bashful and stuff oh like everybody should be able to put everything on the table and everybody got to be man enough and woman enough to face whatever they did and to be able to be open and hear every and anything that somebody has to say that's why one of the realest people on this planet is my mama because Every issue, every problem, any thought that I've had, I can bring it to my mother. And no matter how hard, no matter how difficult, she'll hear me and she'll adjust and she'll make changes. Like, and vice versa. Same thing for me. So, yeah, um, that is why the it's been... Uh, that That's what I've been going through uh, behind the scenes. And now... I am in this place where <laughs> there is nothing blocking my gates. Everything is freely flowing and as things freely flow out, I'm just able to produce so much more content. My business is growing so fast. Like I'm literally not able to make videos telling y'all about certain herbs because by the time I get ready to film the video about the herb, the herb sold out so you guys make sure if you haven't done so already you shop at simple apothecary and make sure you check out this vlog that's coming next and then i'm gonna have a more educational video coming out real soon but my moon is here and i just kind of wanted to do more of a chit chat video just so y'all can get to like know me and understand me more because i know y'all knew me before but i am a brand i swear to god i hate it when people say this but like i am a completely different person than i was like if you have not been around me in the last year you do not know me like you do not you don't know me at all 